Welcome to the new YouTube channel. If you haven't already done it, hit the subscribe button to follow us all season long for updates and content. So happy that you're here. It's going to be a great year. Welcome back to the Richard Sherman Podcast. We got a special guest, PFF's highest rated corner last year. Jalen Johnson, how you doing, brother? I'm good. Getting called a big dog from a big dog. I like it. <laughs> hey, you out there putting it on tape. I can't, you got to give credits where it's due, even though they didn't on the top 100. I said, yeah, come on yeah. now. <laughs> it's all yeah. good. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. You got a lot of respect for me, and I'm, I'm sure you get a lot of respect from your peers, even though the, the top 100, it gets skeptic it sometimes because it, yeah. it was a couple of times I wasn't on there where I was like, man, what are y'all doing? Like, I want to say <laughs> I was second in the league in picks one year and I wasn't on there. I was like, okay, yeah, this, yeah, this cap. Yeah, yeah fact. Yeah, it's big facts. But how you how you feeling? I see you got engaged. Oh yeah, no, nah, I'm feeling good, man. I'm sure at the crib. She uh, that's how I had to step outside. She making some food right now, so she holding it down for me. She still cooking on her last month or so of um, baby girl. So I mean, she need really need to be sitting down because who knows when baby gonna come at this point. But now nah, I'm blessed, man. Just got a new crib. I mean, family coming along well. I mean, healthy, doing my thing in camp. So. God willing, everything's going well. I'm continue to go well. I'm I'm happy to hear that, man. That's the best part of life. You got you because you got a little one. You got a little girl already. This yeah. your second little girl, so you straight girl, dad. Yeah, yeah love facts. that. <laughs> <laughs> Big girl, dad. Yeah, yeah. And then training camp, they letting y'all come home because you vets. Oh yeah, well, I this is my first year, so I'm being on year five. They said five and above get to go home. So hey. Uh, yeah, I, I'm in that big boy boat now, so I, I'm enjoying coming home to the crib even for a few hours. So I'll be asleep by 10, 30, 11 at the latest. So, I mean, sure, I mean I'm enjoying it. Right, right. You got to take care of the pregnant wife. You got to make sure she good. Rub her feet a little right. bit. Hey, you know, it's yeah, your yeah, time, but it's it. her time. <laughs> that's it. So, how you feeling? You know, last year was kind of chaotic. Obviously, it was your best season, second team all pro. You played at a really high level, but... In terms of that building, there seemed to be a lot of chaos, especially when Adam Williams kind of resigned out of nowhere. Then Heber Flutes took over the, the the play calling. Like, what was it like in the building at that time? Honestly, man, it was a lot of ups and downs because I feel like, of course, coming off that year, we went three and fourteen. Um, it was it, it was tough. So I think kind of just coming, we of course we added TJ Tremaine, we added a few more pieces on defense. So going into the year, I felt like it was it, it was kind of hopeful, and then. A lot of things kind of just started to trend in the wrong direction for us. So it kind of it, – it, it was tough again. I mean, we had a streak, I think, of almost like 17 games straight of losing or something like that. So, I mean, for us, it was – well, for me, I, I know it, it was hard just going through, of course, a different regime and then not having the success and then losing and losing again. Like you said, having Alan Williams step down and then kind of not knowing where things were going to go from there. So, I mean, for me, it was honestly a lot of uncertainty. Man, I'm on my contract. Yeah, I'm like, man, I'm trying to – find somewhere to be stable at and then right. it's like nah, I'm, I'm not feeling a whole lot of stability so i mean really just going through all of that and of course you start kind of hearing the talks of if we're going to have the head coach again for the, for the third year kind of just all of those things start to kind of creep into your mind and then i think for me honestly it was just like man at the end of the day my tape is my resume i just got to continue to go out here and, and hoop at the end of the day so i mean for me it was it was up and down, but at the end of the day, business is business. And I know for me, I had to handle mine best way I could. And then things started turning around for us for the good. So, I mean, um, things worked out well, but it definitely did start out really shaky and didn't really know how the future was going to look. Yeah, I mean, that that that's what it seemed like. And I was – it's always unfortunate because when you're in a contract year, you out there, you want to play good football and be part of a good defense. And, you know, y'all had some pieces, but, you know, I, your D-line needed a little bit of help, and I think they right. found some help. You know, you needed some help offensively because they weren't necessarily doing what they needed to do. But uh, you still were able to shine and get your money. They franchise tagged you. I know, you know, when that happened, it happened to a couple corners and everybody right. was uncertain. It was like, you, Sneed. Um, I was like, damn. So yeah. they're just really not paying the corners this year, huh? Yeah, yeah, fact. And then they got it figured out. So was there any ever a time in there they called you and were like, hey, you know, we might trade you or talk to your agent or your agent was like, ah, oh, well. You know, they're talking to teams and trying to figure it out. Uh, honestly, nah, not for not not that I know of at least, not that they told my agent. I know even when I did ask for a trade right at that trade deadline, I know it was again kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier, just kind of trying to find a, a steady home. Things weren't going good, so I'm like, man, at the end of the day, I'm trying to go find somewhere 
to get paid one and then also to go have a chance to to win but i feel like they 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 knew what they were doing they accept, they declined the first one accepted the second one and then gave me an opportunity to go see something but at the end of the day it, it was one of the situations where they weren't going to no but no other team was going to give up all that just for 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 a corner that's something you can do for a cornerback first rounds and all that so i mean they right. made it they made it tough but it ended up working out but i think too when they got to the off season there, there was definitely no trade involved. I felt like it was very open and transparent that I wasn't going to be no – I wasn't going nowhere. They weren't going to trade me or deal me anywhere. And if they had to use the tag twice, then, of course, that was what would have been done. But, um, there was, yeah, I didn't think I was ever going to go anywhere after after they didn't trade me at the deadline. Yeah, I mean, you're homegrown talent, you know. <laughs> yeah. No any, any good organization, you got to keep your homegrown talent, especially the ones that develop into pro bowl, all pro players. Mm-hmm. If you letting them go, then what's the, what's the point? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, we might as well shut it all down. Might as well shut it down. But, y'all, you got some new teammates this offseason. Obviously, Caleb came in with all the expectations, and, and Kay ran you into that that gauntlet of an interview, and right. he gave you all that headache. But you got Keenan, you got Rome, mm-hmm. and then you already had DJ. Tell me, because right. Keenan now, for those yeah, who don't yeah. play corner and those who don't <laughs> deal with the Keenans and the Devontae's and the Doug Baldwin's of the world, yeah. understand, he got some stuff. Back, so something different. <laughs> <laughs> something completely different. So how, how how has it been, you know, I know you've gone against him, but being teammates with him and getting to see his work ethic day in and day out and just the kind of teammate and player he is. Honestly, it's crazy because like you see his personality when just like throughout the league. Of course, you score touchdowns, you do a little dance, but he actually cool, like a cool cat. Super like, cool. He, I, yeah, I know he's a little older. I think he's like thirty two. I'm pushing thirty three. <laughs> I think so. I mean, kind of just for him to be that. I'm not even say that old, but in football years, for him to be right. a old, a old head, he's definitely still young. He has a young, a young soul. He can go out there and talk to the rookies, or he can talk with the OGs and the vets. He's been around. You can talk to him about anything, everything. He has a good fun, loud personality. So, I mean, it definitely makes him being in the locker room a lot easier because it's not like he's just on an old head that come in, put his head down and leave. Like, nah, he's going to crack some jokes, talk to some guys, play some card games, whatever, whatever it is. He's definitely an open guy. But as far as competing, I mean, I love competing against him. I mean, when, of course, we got all those guys for me, I'm like, hey, they ain't going to come in here and work. Like, nah, this ain't going to be just the, the offensive show just for me, especially, like, I have always loved Keenan games. So it's like when we – when he came, I'm like, oh no, nah, hey, I need, a, hey, I'm trying to lock him up for sure. Like, right. So I mean, for me, that was always like my mentality. But it's one of those things that we can definitely have that competition, but we can also still talk and still be cool. But is that is definitely nothing but competition with a guy like that. I feel like he's somebody who can come in here and really make you better as a corner. For me, that's not somebody. His style of game isn't somebody that you see often. So I think being able to get the difference um, in DJ, the big catch guy, the after catch type of guy, then you have. Keenan, the more savvy route runner, you kind of get you kind of get it all with with him and DJ and then Rome learning coming in, bringing them young fresh legs into the right. league. I feel like it's definitely something that you you definitely have to get better at. For me, I've taken the challenge on. I mean, I was trying to go out there and go as long as I can without giving them a catch a one on one. So I mean, I'm not, I'm just trying to find ways to push myself and to push them as well. Not playing best ball at DraftKings, you're missing out. Here's what you need to know. DraftKings Best Ball Millionaire Contest is their biggest fantasy contest ever. We're talking $15 million guaranteed prize pool with two. That's right, two millionaires being crowned for first and second place. If you're a set it and forget it type, then Best Ball is for you. No waiver wires, no roster management, bigger rosters so injuries won't end your season. Only the draft, and that's it. You're set for the season. Still not convinced? Check it out. This year, DraftKings is offering everyone a draft one, get one special. Your $20 entry fee scores you a bonus ticket. Get in on all the best ball action. Download the DraftKings app and use code Richard. That's code Richard for all customers who enter the NFL best ball $15 million contest to get a bonus ticket and get a shot at being crowned one of two millionaires. Only on DraftKings. I mean, y'all got a really good secondary, and and y'all have had it for for a couple of years. Jacon Brisker is going to be a good player. Um, young Kyler, I got a chance to get to know him and watch him when he was at UW. Uh, he's going to be a really good player. Y'all got the D line kind of roaring. Um, Eric Washington's in the fold, and I know he's bringing a lot of right. the Buffalo scheme. 
to y'all, the quarter stuff. Uh, how has that transition been for you as a corner? Because I know y'all ran a little bit of cover two. I've seen you make a, quite a few plays disguising that right. cover two, jumping down, coming out the flag, going to the seven. Uh, how, has it been much of an adjustment for you just getting to learn a new playbook or have they just kind of like kept the playbook and tightened it up a little bit and maybe sprinkled a little new stuff in? Yeah, no, nah, it's been exactly that. Really just sprinkling a new some new things in. I know even last year, it's funny, the one the pick that you talk about, we were really in palms. So you did that on palms? I promise you. Because look, 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 hear me, hear me, hear me. I, I seen the formation. So in my head, I'm like, I know I'm to the field. He sees me off. He probably going to try to bang this five yard in. But I already knew the five yard in with a seven behind it. So I'm like, okay. So I'm kind of seeing it. And I'm in my head, I'm, I'm going to make a play. I don't like just catching that little pass and tackling it. So I'm like, if he throws this short route, I'm going to drive it. So sure enough, he caught it. Boom, he looked. I took off. Boom. I seen him pump. So I'm like, damn, I got to get out of there and, help, and, and get back. So I got, I stuck my foot in the ground, got out of there. He threw it. I'm like, oh, I got him. And I, I took it. But everybody, like, seeing it, it was like, oh, yeah, cover two, great, high, low. I'm like, nah, I was being greedy. And I got You and a I had sick to, dude. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, I was trying. I was trying to make a play for sure, but it, it definitely worked out. But really, just for for this for this year and what we're doing is really a lot of the same things we did last year. Kind of just trying to bring it all together, like you said, with the cover two, the cover three that we were heavy on at first, and now in, and bringing in some quarters, some palms, different things, trying to give different looks, things like that. I feel like it'll be really good for us. And then, of course, adding that pressure up front and combining with the different coverages and looks on the back end, I feel like we'll be, we can be really dangerous. Yeah, I mean, bringing in Montez Sweat was big. You know, I don't think people yeah, exactly. give him credit for how good he is and how consistent he's been in the last, I mean, four or five mm -hmm. years. He's been really, really on and really one of the best players. But uh, what about Rome? Rome was look. I, I can't. I couldn't get a good feel for him when he was at UW, even though we watched a lot of their games. But, you know, playing corner, receivers that big, you can't tell if they really got wiggle like that because, you know, not everybody pressed them. And some of the dudes pressed ain't right. really like that. And that's all right. No doubt, no doubt. But uh, but what? So what do you think of his game initially? Obviously, he's gonna have room to grow. He may grow into something totally different from what he is as a rookie. But just as a rookie coming in, right? No, I think just overall, I feel like he has a very a very solid game, a very smooth game. Just going out, I think for me, the biggest thing that he he'll learn and that he is learning is being able to be crafty in some of those routes. Um, especially going against more savvy vet vet guys that kind of can put some things together that can look at formations that can look at field position, where you're at and releases. You kind of have to add a little flavor to it. And I feel like he'll learn that he'll get that, especially having Keenan in the same room. He'll definitely give him, give him some of those tools, but I feel like he's definitely a, an athletic guy, a good contested catch guy for sure. He can go up there and make some very, really good contested catches. So I think overall, I feel like the ceiling is very, very high for him. I feel like he has everything physically. It's just, again, adding that savviness, the IQ to, some of his routes that I think will take him really to the next level. I think, I, I think, I mean, having Keenan in there and even DJ for, for, for a young kid is going to be, I mean, right. it's going to be outstanding. And I mean, having all of them for, for Caleb is going to be, I mean, that's great. as good as you can ask. <laughs> that's <laughs> no doubt. Um, how is it doing hard knocks? Cause I prayed we never got on that when I was playing, like it got dang cameras in the building all the time. You can't really say what you want to say. You can't just be yourself all the time. Has that been kind of annoying or has it been kind of like, cause some people use it to elevate their brand and elevate their platform and to, you know, last year, everybody was talking about a rod and what he was doing uh, throughout the year. And it made, you know, I think it changed some people's opinion about him, but how has it been for you? Honestly, I don't, I don't really mind it. Honestly, I feel like, because a lot of guys, like, you mic'd up, oh, all yeah, I can't talk to you. I'm like, man, at the end of the day, this is what, like, to me, I'm going to be who I am. Like, everybody should be be themselves. Now, of course, there's a level of certain things we can and can't talk about. But I feel like for the most part, I feel like about 90% of things is all is all good. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like it's all about giving people the insight, like, the inside scoop of what, what, what it's like being in the NFL, what it's like being – and the training camp probably just depending on what time of the year you got the hard knocks. But I feel like for the most part, hey, I'm myself. Like if I'm mic'd up or the camp, hey, I don't care. Like they're gonna just see see me for what it is, see right. the situation for what it is. Now, of course, the professional side of it, you gotta protect certain conversations and certain things like that. But I mean, for me, it, it doesn't it doesn't bother me. I know some people in that when that mic will start kind of creeping up around over, over the top, people will start kind of freezing up, not wanting to talk and do things like that. And I'm like, hey man, they won't. 
they want the content. They want to see us. I mean, we just got to get the people what they want. It's no different than showing up on Sunday. Don't nobody tighten up then. Nah, we got to go out here and be who you are. Right. Nah, you you got the right idea. Well, they put that mic on me. I did not care. I let everybody know. Hey, Look, I got the hey. mic on me. But I'm about to go out here and do what I, exactly. I always exactly. do. Do what I always do. No doubt. Well, you got you, you got paid. Um, there's some some momentum in y'all team, some some optimism, obviously, with the young new young quarterback, some offensive weapons, um, defensive firepower. Obviously, y'all were the number one scoring defense in the second half of the season once Montez Sweat got there. Like that had to give you guys some confidence of of hey, you know what I mean? We can put it together when we need to right. and when everything's going the way we have. So what are your expectations for your team and your defense coming into the season? Because I've been part of a, some really good defenses and it just, sometimes it's just holding each other to the standard every day and not really getting caught up on like, Hey man, you know, we, we chasing these dudes or we're trying to be better than them or we're trying to, it's just really stacking your right. days and really one day at a time, holding each other accountable with respect. Like you can't really right. go out there and be like, man, you suck, man. What are you doing out there? Cause that ain't, Right, yeah, yeah, no, you can't have guys like that. <laughs> it can work out. Now, I think really for me, the biggest thing is improving on our finish. I mean, I feel like for us, we had a few games. I know I can speak to Detroit and Cleveland. We were up winning and then lost the game in, in the fourth quarter, lost the game coming down to those last couple minutes. To where it's like for us, that puts us in a in a different position. I feel like just the biggest thing for defense, finishing two minute drills, finishing um, just that fourth quarter, I think for us, it really just starts with the preparation. I feel like we can't, it really top to bottom. I feel like we can't let up off the gas when, you know, you start getting in that two minute mode, you kind of just start playing back. Like, nah, we got to still continue to be aggressive or really, well, we, well, I like to say it slip people's throats. Like, nah, we can't just come out here and okay. Yeah. And then just think we're going to stop. Like, nah, they still trying to win the game. Like we got to start that right now. And I feel like for me and what I like to do is I've, I'm always getting extra work out of practice. So for me, that's part of like my finishing where it's like, okay, I finished practice, but I got to finish my work. So I know when he gets in the fourth quarter, I still have that dog mentality of like, nah, I'm locking this fool up no matter if it's two minute, four minute, whatever it may be. If they down 10, if they down three, like nah, at the end of the day, I'm still in that mode to finish. And I feel like for me, I'm trying to push guys, get guys to understand like, nah, we, we have a great team, but hey, it's still going to be a situation where we got to finish guys off. It's not just going to be, handed tools we got to go out there and take it against a man's will so i feel like for us that's really but i feel like we can improve on and if we can do that i know we'll we'll win a lot more games for sure who you bringing with you as far as what i heard you say i'm getting some work out the practice but you by yourself huh oh no 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 i'm not by myself hey i, I hey, put it like this i tell him hey i got plenty of work for guys if you want to take it hey i don't got no hidden fees no taxes no none of that if you want to come out here and get some work Hey, I'm here. It's offered to everybody. So I mean, right now I got I got two rookies, um, and then I got another guy who just came from the uh, CFL. They they the most consistent ones right now. I know Jaquan. He was working out with me every day before he kind of got into some injury things. So I know when he gets back, he'll be back with me. But right now, now everybody knows like, hey, Jalen is here after practice getting work. It's up to them. So I mean, I'm, I can only bring those around who 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 want to be around. What I this will be my two cents again, you know what I mean? Right, from, no, no, from right, a dude, right. who, a dude who used to be some in our group. We everybody got to go. Everybody is back there, or nobody's back there because because in the fourth quarter, like you said, everything you're saying is facts and big facts. That's winning football. When if you got to be ready, fourth quarter games online, everybody's tired. But if only Jalen Johnson's ready, and everybody else ain't ready, we still lose. And so what we found out is no matter how strong one of us is, if all of us ain't that strong, we still lose. And mm -hmm. so we, if we're going to do extra work, we going to do it. Like it, it ain't really an option. That's the standard. You guys to do that. Because you challenge them with their own ambition. Or do you want to win? Do, is, is championship what we want to do? Or we just want to be in the NFL? Like we want to be the best defense in football? Or we just want to be some guys out there that play in the NFL? Like, mm -hmm. And a lot of the guys got that kind of pride and say, man, I want to be the best. Then make your actions match your words, brother. Like, because I ain't going to cuss you out. I can't make you do nothing. And I'm not trying to run you into the ground because I know we in training camp. But if we talk in right. technique as a corner, you can always get better. I don't give a dang how but good you are at your press. You can always get two more reps, three more reps. Get your eye placement. Get the receiver. Give me three right. releases real quick. Like, you can mm -hmm. always get but better. And those few reps... When you tired, when when your legs, when you everything's sweating, 
Like, those are when you need it. Lock in real quick. Give me two of your best. Go out there, get Keenan. Hey, Keenan, come on. I know it's going to be tough. Give me Just give me two, three up. And I guarantee you won't say no. Because that's not how, like, winners, that's not how you got here. Right. Not saying no to, to work. And so to be that kind of leader, leaders lead by bringing everybody along. It's not, usually yeah. you don't even lead from the front. You lead from the back. If you got to run laps and the time of the last person is the one that, hey, man, everybody got to come in by 3.30. And that last person been coming in at 3.33. Then you go behind and you make sure you come in at 3.30 because you can come in first and have to run another one because he came in last. So you feel what I'm saying? No doubt. No doubt. I appreciate that. It's all love. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets easier and faster. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. When I go to Mariners games, Game time makes it easy to get my tickets at the last minute. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Sherman for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use the code S H E R M A N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I can't wait to hear why you wanted to play corner. Jeez. Uh, why did I want to play? Honestly, it's crazy. I didn't even start off really playing corner. Like, I Nobody played, did. of course, like, I was at, nah, Pop Warner, I started off, of course, all league running back. I thought I was Reggie Bush, played linebacker. Like, I wanted to be in an action. Like, my dad, like, my dad grew my older brother to play corner from itty bitty boy. Like, eight years old, my brother played corner all the way up until he couldn't play football no more. So, even for me, I'm like, nah, I want to be in action. I want to be in action. And then as I got older, people started getting a little bigger. I'm like, nah, ain't nobody playing a running back no more. These hits a little different. <laughs> so I kind of slowly start working my way outside, play a little receiver. And then I still, that's why I started playing corner safety, kind of learning both. And then I got to high school, played corner. Um, my freshman year, sophomore year, I played corner, but I sat behind two D1 guys. So I was behind them, played more receiver. So I really didn't get a lot of, like, touches that until really my junior year of high school right. so i played my junior year was solid decent and then really i started working on my brother work on my dad really getting heavy because i was a two-sport athlete too i played football basketball so i never really honed in like on my craft truly um but really my junior year once my junior year hit that's when i really started honing in on it. and it's like i always listened to the conversation my dad and my brother had and I knew a lot. Like, I was really, like, smart. I was able to retain the information, but I never had the opportunity to apply it. So when I started really playing it, I started really applying it. And I know we had this seven-on-seven seven practice one time. And my dad and my brother, like, they're big on work. So, like, if they don't see you putting the work, they like, nah, they ain't, like, it ain't it. So right. I was doing my little thing on the side. And so we had that seven-on-seven seven practice. They was trying to give every look, every route. And I was just defending and locking it up, locking it up, locking it up. And they at first they was like, oh, this luck, this luck. They kept right. trying to challenging me. So I kept doing it, boom. And I was like, okay, you might be somebody. So we went to seven-on-seven seven tournament, ended up locking up some four- or five-star guys. My brother was with me, talking trash to him. So really from there, it was just one of those things that's like, nah, I can really like be somebody in this, and it's not just be something that was forced on me that I was born into, but it's like, nah, I really took that and took the extreme pride. So, I mean, really, ever since my junior year, I've been fully committed to being out on the island locking some people up. So what did your brother ever get into the league, or he just played college, or how far did he go? Yeah, yeah, no, nah, he did, he played at UCLA. He played at UCLA, finished his last year at uh, Fresno State. Really, it was crazy. I tell people all the time, he was he was he was better than me, like physically, feet, footwork, dog press off, like he had it all. He was four star, went to UCLA, but he had we all kind of had the same the same thing. We had them shoulder issues, so he went towards shoulders first year, towards shoulders second year. So it's like by the time you get healthy your third year, they already brought two classes of four and five star guys around. So it's like he was still in the mix, still getting in there, rotating, kind of got into it a little bit with the coach on some things, played a few games. And it's like, OK, shit, going on my fourth year. I only played in six, seven games. Right. They still bringing in four and five star dudes. So it's like after a while, he kind of just was like, hey, I already know kind of how this is shaping out. Like they're not about to keep messing with me all like and they got all they guys they bringing in so he just ended up getting his degree finishing his last year at Fresno State went there kind of got into the same cultural situation where it's like you come from where you coming from trying to play a certain style of ball they got right. their culture already 
then it's like you just turn into when was the last time you had some recent tape? Because, I mean, the tape he did have was damn good tape, but it's like that was two two years ago. So it's like he didn't really have a chance of him being 5'9". I mean, that's not that's right. not ideal in, in not today's ideal no game. More. So, yeah, no. Nah. Right. So he didn't end up getting the shot, and he wasn't like a CFL trying to force it and do nothing like that. So that's really – after that, that's really when he turned into my trainer – of course, he was still active and playing, so I moved him out to Utah with me. Got an internship at Utah, and then shoot, we've been training. He's been a trainer. He trains DBs. He trains kids from four or five years old to whoever uh-huh. else. So yeah, nah, we we've where, been, where, we've been at he a long time. Uh, well, we from Cali, but he lives with me in the off season, in season. So I mean, he's he's always with me and has his clientele. Like so I he's in Chicago. He in Chicago? Yeah, so, yeah. So he got his clients out here in Chicago. Coach a little seven on or fo- tackle football team. So. He definitely what's his, active. He, what's his uh training thing called? We can give him a shout out real quick. Oh, it's called Eat it, Elite Athletic Transformation. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, if you're in Chicago and you need some corner work, Elite right. Athletic Transformation is where you need to be no at. Doubt. No doubt. I love it. I love it, man. I love it. That's gonna be that's pretty cool though, because I, I got a good relation. How many years different? Four. He's four years older. Okay, mine is three. And mm-hmm. and boy, mm-hmm. oh, when yeah, I tell right you. There. He right there with it because they just paved the world for you, and then you mm-hmm. come in behind no me. You're like, I just no gotta doubt. do better than what they did, and I'm good. Hey, that's it. <laughs> hey, I do better and stay healthy. I'll be good. I'll be good. I got that. You appreciate you, brother, for putting the blueprint out there. I, I take it yeah. from here. No doubt. So, are there any games you got circled? Because I know you ain't scared to say what you <laughs> need to say nah. on your schedule this year. Y'all got some good matchups, but anything in particular. Right. I got a few. I mean, I'm not. I don't know exactly when we play them all, but I'm looking forward to going against Calvin Ridley again. I haven't went against went up against him since my rookie year. So him, of course, D Hop. Hopefully, he gets back healthy. Um, so looking forward to going against that tandem. And then, sure, I know that next week we got them boys down in Houston, Diggs, Tank, Nico Collins. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, who else we got? Who else we got? Of course, Justin. I missed Justin for the last, I think, two years now. I was yeah. either hurt, he was hurt, so. Looking forward to going against him. Uh, who else we got? Who else we got that's different? I really just say those because shit, ain't nobody jumped out at me yet. Right. I mean, of course, Almond Raw is always in the division and things like that. But I feel like for the most part, I'm looking forward to to those. Oh, San Fran, that's a game. But I'm looking forward to not necessarily the matchups individually. Hopefully, Brandon Ayuka is there. If not, then hey, I'm missing out on that one. Right. Um, but really, other than that, oh, DK says you got the hat on. I haven't, I haven't seen him in my career, so looking forward to those ones for, for sure. You got him at the end of the season, too. We'll be, I, we mm-hmm. got that game. Uh, so I'll I, was, see you I there. think we're in Chicago, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 it's Thursday night, baby. We'll be there. Oh, yeah, I was saying, I'm gonna see you out there. The yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Uh, that's cool. So, who is who is your best, who the best quarters in the National Football League right now outside of you? Corners, and we just saying, are we asking we like asking. my style, or are we talking about just like overall everything? Whatever, it's your world. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my style. I like because I feel like it's hard to, I don't know. I feel like everybody judges it different. Everybody can judge it by interceptions or whatever. But for me, I'm going. If I had to put these four guys on an island, I would probably say I'll go with Pat. No, in no order. I'll probably go Pat, Denzel, Sauce. Oh, and I can't get myself to four. Who else would I go? Who else yeah, look, go? we just going to assume you on the list, but we we need five. Right, 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 right. Uh, island, island, island. So I'm going I'm to go ahead and help and put some names uh, out there. I would say you got to give me some names. Stingley been playing at a real high level. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, who am I missing right now? Because he was just uh, Sneed. Sneed killed in the playoffs last year. McDuffie killed in the playoffs last year. Charvarius uh, plays at a high level. When he was going, he had a nice little run of four or five games where he had a buck in each of those games. Uh, you know, out in Seattle, Tariq. Uh, you know, they got the young young nickel that that's played mm-hmm. at a high level. Um, you still got Jair. You got the big. You still got Jair. You got the big, the the old old big dog Jairs. You got the the Slays. You got um, you got Jalen out in out in Miami. Marshawn. Uh, Yeah, it's whatever you whatever you want. Oh, that's tough. Mm. 
Mm-mm-mm, that's tough on me. Because Pat, Pat is going to be in that conversation all the time. Obviously, you played at a high level. You get to be in that conversation all the time. Jair, when he's healthy, he's as good as they get. Uh, Marshawn just kind of been overshadowed because they haven't been very good yeah. as a team. Um, Denzel never really gets that much credit. Uh, yeah, no, nah, I, I, I love his <laughs> I love his dog. Yeah, I t- yeah no, nah, I took some time to watch watch those three. So that's why it's really hard for me because I just took – I know my offseason, I was watching Pat. I was watching Sauce. Especially like soft, you hear a lot. Like you hear some people, oh, he's overrated. You hear some people say he's really good. So I'm like, nah, damn that. I need to go watch myself. I'm like, nah, young bull guy. He 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 got some things to him for sure. And and it, to me, it's like people always say, oh, he holds. If he don't get called for it, he not holding. Like damn, like damn the oh, he does this, but he doesn't get called. That's part. That's part of it. All that's part of it. Push off all the yeah. Like hey, they push off. Nobody says oh, well, he pushed off. Like nah, nobody nobody cares. So I think. For me, he uses what he got. I feel like it's really hard to give a fourth. It's really hard to give a fourth. I feel like the playing styles change after that. I feel like I love, I love watching Snead and McDuffie. I think it's hard. I feel like it's really hard to tell when they them boys get a lot of pressure. Right. They get a lot. Yeah, they that boy get a Chris lot Jones of be in there. Yeah, I about to say they get a lot of pressure, but I definitely love love their games. If I had to give you one. But I will say this: they, in Spag system, them boys in man all day. Hey, all the time. And, they press, play, man. and they press, yeah. They pressed and up. They press it. Yeah, no, nah, they not. They not ducking no smoke for sure. What he did to Reek in that playoff game, people was like, "Oh man, that's crazy." I said, "No, nah, he practiced against him all the time. He has no fear yeah, of that yeah. man." I would say, "No, nah, he used to. Yeah, he used to." Him. <laughs> he ain't got no fear. What What other corners that you when you came in or when you were at Utah? That you were looking at and you were like, man, I'm a model my game after that. Because you when you were coming up, it was it was probably Lee been there. Uh shit, Jalen was pretty much in his prime. <laughs> I was saying uh, Jalen was prime. Marshawn was young, but he was eating his first few years in the league. Yeah, Slay was killing. Who did I model? Yeah, I was about to say, I watched, I would say between Jalen, Slay, Marshawn, Jair. Um who, we missed uh, Stefan. Stefan was killing right there. I think he won oh, defensive player of the year yes, right around there. Yes. Yeah. yes. No, no, no. For sure, Gilmore. For sure. Who else? I would probably say, yeah, I would honestly say those five. I would say those five for sure. Coming in like, out of college. Because, again, I feel like you watch to me. Like, I love Jalen Ramsey's game as far as, like, how he goes. Like, like, I just love, like, his dog mentality. I feel like it's something, like, I couldn't watch him necessarily and, like, oh, I'm going to go do that. Like, nah, he right. just does. He just has some things that God gave him that <laughs> God didn't he, give him. He didn't give everybody else. Yeah, yeah. He didn't he skip everybody else on that. But it's like looking at him, he gives you like when you watch him, it's like, nah, hey, I gotta really be a dog. So I feel like I've always loved like his mentality. Of course, his ball skills going up and making those spectacular plays and just really his energy. His energy I feel like is very, very contagious. Um, I feel like more so watching Gilmore, his IQ and technician was always something that definitely stood out stood out to me and that's something that I that I like as far as guys being able to hey, you shadow you take him like I'm not I'm not impressed by like the interception I'm impressed by it. but you can put him on him and that guy's eliminated out the game that's what that's what moves me more so than, than anything so I love that about him even Marshawn I know he was doing that at an early age I think he won even the player of the year for his rookie year huh yeah rookie year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah he came in doing his thing um who else? Jair. Jair has always been a, a dog. I remember watching him early and just watching his tape and that's all the trash he was talking, his making right. plays, his antics. I'm like, nah, look, he kind of, hey, he's small, man. Little man going to go out there and do it. He's going to go get it. So, yeah, he's going go go to fight. So I definitely love always watching DBs, man. I give a lot of respect to guys that play this position at a high level that go out there and, and compete. Because, I mean, for me, it's like you'll see you turn on the tape and you'll watch certain guys. They're like, man, there ain't no pride in that. Like, there ain't no pride right. in what he's doing. Like, Bro. I, 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 I don't I, like it. It's this. certain people I couldn't even watch on tape. Like, if I'm if I'm trying to judge a receiver or I'm about to face somebody, <laughs> yeah. I, if they play certain teams, I wouldn't even watch their tape because I'm yeah, like, bro, that's not even going to help me. <laughs> that's not what – that's who they ain't yeah, going to help not, me. I can't, get a good, I can't get a good assessment. I can't get a good assessment watching this dude. Look, he gave you 250. Like, what do you want yeah, me to learn nah, from I, that? Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um. Who? What was your welcome to the NFL moment? Like, who blessed you? Because, because my second year, it was this receiver Stevie Johnson, and uh, nobody oh, really knows nice. about it. 
He boy, was nice. He nasty. <laughs> that boy he in nice. a phone booth. You ain't touching him. Yeah, yeah. Nah, four nice. seven, four six, but in a phone booth, mm-hmm. your hands yeah, ain't gonna nah, get on. Yeah, wiggle. Dude, you know, so I feel like it's hard. I feel like bless me. I feel like that's that's hard. I feel like I really in the past. I feel like I really held my own. Of course, I got ran over once. Like right, bad, right, right, once, right. Like, year, but I feel like as far as the past. I feel like one dude who always gave me problems. I know, like me and Devonte would like compete, so I wouldn't say he blessed me. Like I would, I would win mine. He win, win his. Um, but I would probably say I struggle with Mike Evans. My first, my first big year, strong first ass. Year. Yeah, no, nah, I, I, I know I struggle with him for sure. Everybody else, I feel like was kind of like was was solid. Like I wouldn't say definitely like I had trouble, but. Mike, like he was somebody. I'm like, God, like he doesn't do nothing special. It's not nothing that you don't know that he's gonna do. But it's like, God damn, then he got Tom Brady. Especially when when I seen him, he got Tom Brady throwing. So I'm like, Hey, I can. I'm right here. He's big, running down the field, all strong. He making tests and catches. I'm like, Hey, this, hey, hey he ain't no different. joke. <laughs> he ain't no joke. Look, he, and he no get the joke. ball in his hands. He way bigger and stronger than right. you ever think he is. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> No doubt. Yeah, he was one of them ones too. Me and me and B, meet him and me and B Marshall had a couple battles where mm-hmm. I was like, God, like, oh, yeah, yeah, wrestling nah, with dinosaurs. Back, I would say long lever cats. They ain't got no wiggle. They just all strong. All strong. Hit you, grab you with about right here oh, a couple yeah, times. Yeah, nah. Hey, I made sure I back my alignment up a little. Smart man. Smart man. <laughs> hey, you can't get it out there and try to bring the fights in. They want that. Smart man. Well, Joe, I ain't going to take up too much more of your time. If you got any questions for me, anything you want to ask, I'm, I'm happy to answer. Other than that, I'll let you let you get back to your, your old lady, your fiance, and your family. No, nah, I appreciate it. You, you, well, I I don't, I know my answer, but you first, you first ballot, you think? Uh, I hope so. You know, I don't want to jinx nah, it. I don't being honest. <laughs> look, look, I don't, you don't want to jinx it. You know what I mean? Hey, look, nah, hey, we gotta be put sitting it out here. there. Ain't no jinx. We gotta put it out there. Look, you put it out there and it don't happen. It's out there forever. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> look, the rest yeah. of it I had control over. You know what I mean? Like yeah, when fact, I want to call I'm my own shot. That. But I'm not mad at that. I hope so. I think I did enough. You know, I went to three Super Bowls, got enough all pros and all that, you know, played on enough great defenses, went somewhere else and we had a great defense and yeah, yeah. went to another bowl so you know I, I think during my time I think I, I I would say I was the best one um that playing but you know everybody got their opinion so I hope hopefully the voters think that and you know get me in right, but no doubt. that would mean a lot to me you know to, to, to get that jacket and and you know all your hard work everything you dreamed about as a little kid comes true you know that's the oh. that's the cool part but that's what I'm saying about your teammates like if you really want to shine, you bring them boys along with you and you and and they get it. You know what I mean? Like real competitors, real champions, real dudes who really want what they say they want, they don't really question it. You know what I mean? If you if you got to right. pull teeth to get a dude to do some extra work or to 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 say, "Hey, this is our standard as a DB group and our DB room and they want to argue it," then they not really what they say they are and they probably going to get replaced some, by somebody else. The coaches will see it, the tape will show all that. But most dudes ain't built like they didn't make it to the league by being like that. So you right. might have an off day where I'm tired or my hamstring hurt and sore. That's different. But if you say, hey, in this DB room, this is our standard. This is what we're doing. We're working every day after practice. I don't care if it's just catching a few balls on the jugs or getting a few releases. Like We go out there. We do not do the minimum. And right. dudes okay. be like, no, nah, man, I'm going home. You, you ain't going to be what you say you want to be. You ain't never going right. to get there, yeah. right? So no, I would say I would say that was the biggest thing about the Legion of Boom and our group that 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 helped elevate us and elevate the guys around us and elevate all of us is that, that that was the standard and it was the standard and nobody ever questioned it. Nobody said nothing. You know what I mean? Like, hey, go get your extra work and let's go home. We're going to do a lap around the field. We're going to do this. Get your get your 10 uh, press coverage reps or your 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 safety reps, your eye reps, your quarterback throwing your ball, whatever. And let's get on out of here. But the standard is the standard. and Nobody's going to argue with that. No doubt. No doubt. My last one for you, and I know how smart and intelligent you were, of course, off the field, but I know on the field it it, it, was, it was different. I feel like I ain't seen too many guys in the National Football League run somebody right before they ran it. <laughs> so I think for me, just always seeing that, I'm like, damn, he knows something. I feel like, how did how did you get to that point? Like, how did you, because like for me, like I can watch film, and I get to a point where like I good, I'm good at like route recognition, so I can kind of 
see, okay, three by one, I'm to the field based on certain splits. I can expect certain things. But how, I guess for my question to you is how did you get to that point to where it was at the level which it was as far as your IQ, you seeing certain things, you calling things out before it even happens. Was that kind of studying? Was that, do you think you just kind of have a certain type of memory <laughs> or something? Or like how, how, how did it you was, get to that level? It was, it was a little bit of everything. I played receiver for a long time mm -hmm. in college. And so I learned West Coast offense under Bill Walsh and under Harbaugh and all mm -hmm. of them. So we, I understand what the offense is trying to do from their, their, their route combinations, like their philosophy. And a lot of right. the route combinations, like a flat, two to the flat means one coming in or one on the curl. curl or one on the slant, depending on if it's quick game or not. Um, two running an over route means one coming in. It's either dig or mm -hmm. post. You know what I mean? So certain combinations are married with other things. Right, together, yeah. And so I practice that way. I practice uh, situational football. That's all I do when I'm watching tape, when I'm watching our own offense. If I'm in training camp, I'm breaking down, hey, our max protect deep developing routes. What are our offense like? Like, okay, they got they got a tight end in and a grave digger and a running back staying in, max protect. All right, so they running deep developing routes. What's their favorite routes? Okay, they like double dig post or they like um, deep These comebacks with a, uh, with a middle yeah. read or whatever it is. And once you learn those things, then let the split speak to you. Let the situation, hey, it's third and five. What do they like on third and five again? Like, okay, in a bunch, they like spot where it's the, the, the sit, mm -hmm. the seven, the flat. Right. And it's like, oh, they always do it out of emotion. As soon as I see mm -hmm. that motion, all right, now y'all hey, telling alert. me <laughs> alert, what alert I want to know. Hey, alert this, alert this. If mm -hmm. I see two, if I see three go to the flat, I know we I'm putting the grease. And now I just want to know which one I'm trying to bait him into throwing. Hey, mm -hmm. he see the safety down, so he understands his three. He thinks he has the flat. So if I take away the flat, I know he takes the seven. So can I hold the flat long enough to go get the seven like you did in that palms rep? Mm -hmm. And you did what something I would do, but you did it subconsciously. You you just did it reactionary, yes. which was really mm -hmm. cool. But so a lot of it is just understanding the concepts and, and how routes are married. Like certain routes go with other routes right. like always. And so you they can't really run the concept without running the second part of it. So now I got to just know where my eyes are supposed to be. Hey, my eyes are on two on this play. My eyes are on one because I don't have any indicator over there with two. Or on backside of a three by one and it's third and five and I'm with Devontae. And you know it's, yeah. it's up from there. <laughs> you know what I mean? We right, can dance yeah. anyway. From there, um, but a lot of times it was just me understanding the concepts, understanding the situation we were in, and not letting the fatigue and the the craziness of a game Bad, get me yeah, out of my that. game plan. No doubt, no doubt. What was I gonna say? I feel like that's my that's my biggest thing. I feel like it is understanding it from an offensive perspective. Because I feel like for me, I I can see it, and like I'm really good at like you said, splits, formation, situations. Like, okay when they want to do certain things, especially, like, when I see two, like, in coverages that I can see two, two going to tell me all I need to know about one. Like, I don't – and a lot of times, like, I'll tell, like, receivers asking, like, how you know I was running that route? I said, honestly, bro, because I see number two. Like, two told me what you was, what you was going to do. So, I was just in my favor. Unless you just did something completely off script, then, hey, I got to rally to that. But Right, I, I got to put that in my notebook. Yeah, hey, in fact, I just got to, hey, chalk that up and, and play a little true, but – for the most part, I think for me, it's like, okay, how does the offense see what we're doing or see what I'm doing? I feel like that's the biggest thing that I want to get to, to where it's like when I do know what they're doing, I can still see how he's seeing how the quarterback's seeing or how the OC's seeing it. I think that's something I want to take to that next level or kind of start thinking. And I feel like I don't know who the hell I need to talk to. I need to figure you can, out. You can talk to some it. of them quarterbacks. You can talk to your OC. Like a lot of the football minds ain't trying to keep secrets, especially if guys on their team. They might, you know, it's training camp. So they might, oh, we ain't helping you, yada, yada, yada. But yeah, during yeah. the season, they want you to succeed. So right. if you're like, hey, hey, could I, could I watch a little tape with you? I just want to understand offense a little better so I can play better. When we playing cover two, they got an answer for it. When they playing cover three, mm -hmm. when they doing yeah, this. Yeah, they definitely and, have an answer for all of that. And they and you need to know what they think it and why it's they answer so where the ball should be coming. So we be in the game, and that's why people always said y'all ran cover three and like oh it was so simple it was so simple because we knew what they were going to do yeah, and so exactly. we knew where the answers were all the time. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, you, every time we got a weakness, it got a weakness. Communicate with the rest of your dudes too, because mm -hmm. that helps you. Like when they know what you know and everybody knows we the same all, thing, yeah, we can be together. 
we can be together and you can dictate where the ball goes. You can say, hey, hey, we got cover two. It's, it's going to be, it's a three by one, but it's a nub side. They run in a seven on the back side and they run in special, all go special coming from the three by one side. Hey, we ain't cover three. I'm not going, I'm going a, I'm to a pass this tight end because I don't want my linebacker running with speed at three. Right, so at three. I need my buzzer to, to drop a little deeper. Hey, buzz deeper so he can come off that seven. We're going to make him throw the flat route to the running back, to the tight end right. side. But we ain't going to let him get that special with him running yeah, with my nah, middle linebacker. Over. Yeah, nah. And so right. stuff like that, we would we be, we just talk it through. Hey, 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 Bobby, Bobby, hey, I got him. Hey, KJ, hey, drop. Hey, I need you deeper. We're going to rally. We're going to rally to the to the flat. And we do do boop boop, rally to the flat. It's a four yard game. He gotta take it down. <laughs> hey, he gotta take it down. He got he ain't got no choice. Or he can throw me the ball. You know, right, you know what? Yeah. He don't want to do that. <laughs> he don't want to do that. But it, you know, at times they got they yeah, got kind of greedy like that. They do. They get stubborn. But but that's where leadership and camaraderie and chemistry mm-hmm. comes together because you start to to help other guys do their job well. You know what I mean? Like, right. don't keep secrets out there. It ain't no point. I want y'all to no know doubt. what I know. No doubt, no doubt. I appreciate it for sure. For sure, for sure. Oh, all love, all love. All right, baby, get get in there and go take care of that old lady. Work her feet. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. I appreciate you, big dog. Much respect. Much respect and love. I'll see you at the end of the yes, season sir. when we got your game. No doubt. All right, fam. All right.